This is Gary with Jolly Dolly and I'm going to show you how to install a retrofit kit uh, for the upgraded charger on a motorized winch dolly. Uh, this is a winch dolly right here. You don't have to take the tires off. We just didn't happen to have tires on here for this demonstration. You're going to be replacing this panel right here uh, with the one that came in the kit because it's got a charge port on it. Um, First thing you're going to do is lay the dolly down like this and then you're going to remove this cover, take the screws out and kind of open it up this way. And what you're going to see is an onboard charger right here. That's what is getting removed from this dolly. We're not going to use that anymore because that's uh, what's causing your battery problems. And you may or may not be also changing your batteries at the same time. Uh, this onboard charger is going to go this way. There's going to be some wire clamps here holding it in place and then it's going to hook up uh, to this. This is the, the onboard uh, charge port and it's got a splitter. One side is going down to here. This is the battery charger for your winch battery and the winch battery is right here. We're not going to mess with that. We're not going to mess with this. Um, but we are going to get rid of this and we're going to take this wire out and you'll need to do something with this other thing. Zip tie it to something. You can zip tie it here. You can zip tie it over here somewhere so that it just so that it doesn't get hung up in the chain since it's not going to be used anymore. Uh, so I'm going to show you the process. Now before we do anything, we're going to remove the fuse right here. This pops open. The fuse pulls right out and set that aside. Now we're going to get rid of this charger. Just cut these zip ties. Now we're going to loosen all of the battery bolts. Uh, for this, you may need a 10 millimeter or you may need an 8 millimeter, or depending on the style of the battery terminal, you may actually need uh, an 8 millimeter. Uh, wrench, two of them. It's a good idea to take a picture of all this wiring before you start taking this apart. That way uh, when you put it back together you can make sure it goes back the same way that it's supposed to. Make sure not to lose any of these washers, although if you're putting new batteries in, you should have new washers and bolts uh, that come with the batteries. All right, so this is coming out. You would unscrew whatever wire clamps are over here holding this in place. Cut some of these zip ties to get all this apart. And then unplug that. It's going to be taped up with electrical tape. Uh, and then once you do, you're going to want to get some more electrical tape and just cover this up so it doesn't get wet. And then remember to zip tie it someplace out of the way so it won't get hung up in the chain. So once we get this out, we can loosen the battery, hold down bolts. The other one is accessed through this little hole right here. If you can't get the socket on there, just pull around on this bar until you can get it. All right, so we take these bolts out. Yours may or may not have slots in it. If you have a slot at both ends, there's an extra step at the end we need to do to make sure the, the batteries don't uh, go anywhere. So with that out of the way, you can pull your batteries out and replace them. I'm not going to pull these out because it's not necessary to, to show you. So the next step is to remove this panel and for that you're going to need a drill driver with a 5 16 nut driver on the end of it. And you can access all these screws, you just got to figure out where to get the drill driver.
be careful as you pull this out there's a wire that connects here we're going to disconnect that just by pulling on it uh, just make sure you note how it's installed so you don't put it upside down when you put it back in uh, and of course we're going to take this battery indicator and pop it out of there to use in the new one all right so this is going to go in here like this so we're going to make sure the, the battery indicator is in the right direction pop it in place now we're going to screw this in place just make sure these wires get routed through here um, at this time this is when you would want to go ahead and put your battery hold down bolts in place and go ahead and tighten them down because you can actually access it from here once you put this panel on if this bolt is not threaded into there it's going to be really difficult to to get it uh, so I'm going to plug in this don't forget to plug this in we're going to route these wires into here and then put this panel in place And screw it in place. There we go. Uh, if any of these screws are stripped out <clears throat> and and won't hold it you can take another screw we'll, we'll we should have some in your kit or you can just get some self drilling screws and and drill a new hole right next to it another option is to get one size bigger screw uh, so that it holds in place so now we've got this in place this is plugged up we have our little charger port right here now we're going to hook up the batteries all right, so we're going to tighten down the battery hold down bolts. You should do this one at a time, easing down on each one. You don't want one to tighten too much before the other one, or it'll put too much pressure on one side of the battery. So just keep going back and forth. You don't want these too tight. Okay, so now you're going to put your wires back the way they were with the only exception being these two little wires that come from the charge port are going to go one's going to go here the black one and the red one is going to go here same place the old charger wires went uh, so you're going to want your bolt with your washers to go through the charger port first then through this other ring terminal you may have one you may have two ring terminals this one has both wires crimped into one so then down here, same thing. Put your bolt through the charge port wire, and then through whatever terminals were on there. Tighten it up. Make sure this wire is not gonna hit this chain. Uh, in fact, looking at, I'm gonna move it over here so that it doesn't rub on that. <clears throat> Now you're going to connect your jumper wires that connect the batteries together. You should still have the fuse taken out of here. And the last one. These can be tricky. There 
And at this point, before you tighten these down, you're gonna to wanna to check your picture if you took one to make sure that all of this is connected properly. Again, this, these red wires and your red charger wire should be here. Uh, these black wires here and your black charger port wire should be here. And then you have your jumpers going this way and this way. All right, now you would take uh, whatever tool you need, tighten these down one by one. Uh, do not over tighten these. You want them snug, but not too tight. It can, you can break the uh, battery terminal if you tighten them too tight. So at this point, just double check everything. Make sure if anything needs to be taped or zip tied anywhere, take care of that to make sure you have good wire management. No wires are gonna get hung up in the chain uh, or pulled on by anything. And at this point, you can put the fuse back in. Now, these fuses will sometimes pop and spark when you put them in. That's normal. There you see. Now if they arc really bad and blow up, that means you got something seriously miswired. But if you took a picture and were careful to put everything back, you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, that fuse should go in, close that. Now you're pretty much done. You can close this cover and seal everything back up, put your screws back in. So if your battery tie down has slots on both ends, uh, you want the sideways slot down here and you want to take a zip tie, pass it behind the bolt like this. Of course, that's supposed to be tight, not loose, but this will keep this from slipping off here. Um, right under there like that, tighten and snip off the end. Um, you want your slot up there to be running this way. Not all battery tie downs have slots, some do. Uh, it's designed to make it easier to change out the batteries. So before you close everything back up and pick the dolly back up, you probably want to test the charging. This is the charge port. You open it up like that, uh, plug in here, so once you get all your charger wires plugged up, it should look like this. You have your charger, you have your lights. When it's not plugged up, you should have red and green. You're gonna take this plug and plug it in here, turn it till it clicks in. And if it's working, assuming the batteries aren't already fully charged, uh, that green light should turn to orange, indicating that it's charging the batteries. Uh, and you want to leave this like that until that light turns green, indicating that the batteries are fully charged. Don't interrupt uh, the charging cycle. Uh, it's not good for the batteries. And that's it. Um, when you're done, make sure to close this cap so water doesn't get in here. If you ever do get water in there, just tilt the dolly back to get the water out. This is a 36 volt DC system, so it's not a huge deal, uh, but you don't, you don't want to get corrosion in there, so just make sure that stays clear of water. Uh, and that's it. So I should mention that this is still where you charge your winch battery. So if you've used the winch, make sure to plug an extension cord up here to charge the winch battery. Uh, even if you don't use it, you should charge it every once in a while uh, just to keep it topped off. Um, and this, of course, is where you charge the motor batteries using this charger. I should also mention that both of these chargers, the onboard winch charger and the external motor battery charger, can be left plugged up indefinitely to the dolly. Uh, they have float charging ability, so they're not gonna overcharge the battery. In fact, it's a good way to maintain them uh, at 100%. You can just toss this thing. These, these used to work great, and then at some point in time, uh, they, they turned terrible and started ruining batteries, so they must have changed something in the design. Anyway, this is trash.
All right, this is how we program a battery indicator for a Jolly Dolly motorized dolly. You would need to do this if you're replacing this or if you're upgrading to the new 4 amp external charger. So you hold down this button until a number pops up, then you continue pressing this button until you get to number three, then press this button. Now we're gonna change these values by using the top button to change the number and the bottom button to go to the next number. And we're gonna change the first number to 31.5, which is the dead battery voltage. And then the second number, we're gonna change that to 38.5. Oops. If you mess up, just keep pressing the button until you get around. 38.5 is the fully charged voltage for these batteries. When we're done, we're gonna hold down this button so it goes back to the number three. Then we're gonna turn it off and back on again. And now it's gonna come up and the voltage is the same, but the uh, percentage is gonna display more accurately. And that's it.